before I forget, I'm gonna do a little gear review. So uh, let's see how it goes. Okay, I've got a whole lot of stuff here. And uh, let's see. Okay, let's start with shoes, most important. So I use the Solomon XA Pro 3D version 8, which I call my V8s. Um, honestly, I think it's the most excellent shoe you can ever imagine. So I've only met one other guy in the Camino who was wearing the same shoe. And he was also one of the probably less than five people I've ever met that had on the Camino that had no blisters. So I did all my kilometers with these shoes. You can see they're a little bit messed up now. I changed the liner to a liner that, I mean, this thing is shut now, to a liner that just gives me a bit more of an arch support. Um, and you can see, well, you can't see now because I, I don't have a, I can't zoom the camera, but anyway, inside here, it's got a bit messed up. Um, so it's, but I've got chicken feet, so I think it's a, crawl into the back here but tracking is good everything else is good um, and literally they lasted me the entire Camino the last three kilometers I, I, I felt a little bit of a shin issue which I think was they were they were reaching the end they, they're only supposed to be good for about a thousand kilometers and with training and everything I think I did a thousand with them um, in, in Santiago, I actually bought uh, um, the X-Ultra, <laughs> which are these ones, X-Ultra. Um, I think it's also a very good shoe. You can see it's got nice thread and everything. But honestly, I've walked quite a bit with this in Portugal. Not a lot, but I mean, I did probably about 50 Ks on it. Um, but it's... It, to me, in my opinion, nowhere near the, the XA 3D Pro. So these ones, they tired now. So I'm definitely gonna buy new ones. But I, I literally carry these ones strapped in my backpack all the way because I kind of attached to them now. So they're quite cool. 800 and whatever kilometers, not a single blister, not one, nothing, nada. Second secret weapon is these socks with the separate toes. So they, oh God, I would wash these ones yet. Ah, Camino spell. Ah, where were I? Okay. okay, so these ones, one for each toe, they liners. They are fantastic. Buy them before you go because you can't get them in Santiago or in Spain. You can, but it's very hard to get. Um, and then of course just good hiking, wool hiking socks with a left and a right, left for left, right for right. And believe you me, I, I had an issue one day I was walking and uh, about 10 kilometers in I thought something is not right with my left foot. You know, if anything doesn't feel right, it's going to become a problem. If there's any spot on your foot as a hot spot or, a, or anything, or there's little stones in your shoes, take them out because that will become a problem. And then uh, after 10 kilometers, I thought something is really not right with my left foot. And I took my socks off and everything. And then I discovered I, I was wearing two right socks um, and not left, right. So they're, they're, they're marked left, right for a reason and wear them like that. This I put over those little, I don't know what you call them, socks. Um, really great. So feet wise, no problems whatsoever. The normal pain and aches and stuff but nothing. And if you see the blisters that so many of the other um, hikers have had, horrific blisters, and I had not a single one. Of course, um, uh, I, I did uh, use a bit of a cream. So my German friend gave me, I think it's called Herstag. It's basically like a Vaseline, but it's, um, it's not petroleum based. It's, um, I think it's uh, animal fat based. And I use that to rub my feet at night and also in the mornings before I put my sock on. But that was only, after, I don't know, probably three, 400 kilometers. So that wasn't the secret. The secret was the shoe, the liner and the socks. That was really, really amazing. I then carried a buff, um, just a normal buff. And what I did is I used to, you can see, I used to carry it to just to cover the back of my neck for sun 
And then the buff became a bit of everything, wipe off sweat. And I washed it every night basically because the buff, uh, it was very handy and I liked it. So I carried the buff. This I did not carry. This is what you want. <laughs> this is inside here is my um, Compostela and also this the additional one. Maybe I can show you. I like this. So it's just, uh, this is the additional one that you pay, I think two euros or whatever for it. And it gives the kilometers and everything. And it says you start in St. John, you complete it in Santiago. That one you can only get if you've done that all long distance. There's a few places you can get it from. And then this one is just the normal Santiago, your normal Compostela written in Latin. Your name in Latin, everything. Really cool, I'm gonna have them framed quite quickly. I had to carry a laptop um, because I had to do some work. Now this is a nice, nice two kilograms which I had to carry but it was one of those compromises I had to make. Um, so I had to carry a, a laptop as well um, and that obviously made my back heavier. Schlafs, very handy. I did take thicker ones in case I would ever meant to walk with them but that never happened, never, ne ne never needed. But as soon as you reach your destination, kick off your shoes, let your feet breathe. Uh, if you have some cold water or there's a river or something, let your feet hang in a cold water. It's very good. Um, and then just put on your sloughs. So that's quite important. Then I, I organized. That is nice. So I had different color bags. You'll see them different color bags for everything. Um, and that really, really helped. Ah, let's start here as well. I obviously had a cap, which I don't know where that is. Oh, it's probably still in here. Uh, glasses. I liked these ones. Um, uh, unfortunately, I picked up a couple of scratches, but anyway. So these ones change color with the sun and everything. And what I liked about them is they're not, not just for the sun. They were very good for um, little bucks that were nagging around, and around your head. So I had a big issue with them. Um, and the glasses was very good for that. Um, and then of course what's nice about this is as soon as you walk into a bar or, or anywhere, you don't have to really just take them off, put them back on, take them off, put them back on. You know, I just uh, leave them on because they, they, change, they change their tint based on the sun. So I'm now indoors, so they don't look like uh, sunglasses, but they were very handy because they wrap around, so they're good for wind, good for sand, dust, good for bugs and stuff and obviously then just good for your eyes. So they were very, very important to me and I carried them, I, I, I was wearing them every single day. Um, I think they're really good. So these are just Oakley's that change color. Okay, my black bag of um, goodies, all my bags had these little clips on them. You can see these clips and that's just handy to keep them together or hook them on the side of your bag if you do want to to carry something on the outside of your bag because you are going to need it. I use these clips. Um, by the way, by having a colored bag system, so that that makes it so much easier because you've got something in your in your backpack, you know you've got it, but you don't know where it is. And then you have to unpack your entire backpack and go through all the missions and everything. It's a nightmare. So me, it was easy. Blue, blue was my gadget bag. So blue at you know, if you open up all the chargers and stuff, and I, I had to take a little computer mouse to work with that because it's just easier. And then literally all my chargers, headphones, and all the gadgets and wires and electronics and everything was in blue bag. Um, so, you know, what the hell? Oh, okay, this is something cool I'm gonna show you. And that was all my electronics. So if I ne needed any electronics, the blue bag was instant. So at the airport I had something that the friendly uh, Spanish customs official confiscated after I've been through five airports with it for no problem at all, which is my little wine bottle opener and a tiny little scissor this big. So the friendly customer official relieved me of that. Uh, but it was easy because I could just take the blue bag. Uh, okay, then I had like um, my green bag was all my medical stuff. All my, no, I'm not dying, okay? Maybe we all are, but anyway. Um, that is just all my Camino juice, your Voltaren, uh, all the other, oh, smells like a chemistry in here. 
Um, these are all vitamins and stuff that I take. And whatever is medical, I added in my green bag. So if I needed something medical, somebody needs some special cream or whatever, I open my bag, I get out my green bag, and I've got it in there. Then I took with me, that was very, very handy for everybody else except me. And that was, um, let me take it out, KT tape. Okay. So I think it's called Kinsey or whatever. This one is not buggered a little bit. But anyway, this is KT tape, you know, the stuff that I strapped everybody with. Um, it's very good for any muscles or support. There's a whole lot of stuff you can do this. You can use it to, to wrap your feet certain places, hot spots to get rid of blisters and stuff. I had the black one and I had the pink one. And if you're going through the videos, you'll see often I strap people up with this. I only use it on myself once. Ah, this one's supposed to be my medical bag. Tiger Bomb. Very nice for mosquito bites and all sorts of ailments and ailments and whatever else. I haven't really used it. Not for myself, anyway. This was something I bought there when I, when the back of my shoe started um, becoming a bit tired. You cut it out and, you, and then it, it's got a uh, glue and you can literally just glue this uh, anyway, you can glue this onto your feet um, and it supports you, so it's, a very, it's a, like a felt-like thing and you can glue this onto wherever you, you've got a problem. Um, because mine was at the back of my heel because the shoe was getting tired there, I think it actually worked very well. Um, I did get a bit of irritation afterwards of the glue. Um, but anyway, so that's a KT tape bag. And uh, at one stage, you know, I just clipped this onto the outside of my bag because I knew we're probably going to need it. Um, and that's where those little clips came in handy. Uh, these bags are waterproof. Oh, just a quick secret with them. What I did do with them is I cut, I cut them. So when you, you take the bag and you roll it up, these are C2 Summit. You can find them anywhere, even in Santiago in, in Spain. I cut it there. So I can just squeeze, squeeze all the air out of it. Um, and if this, it, it stays nice and tight like that. So you don't have air problem, but for that I had to cut a little, a little hole at the bottom of each one of them, um, so they become easy to, easy to, um, to get air out. Of course, I had headphones in a technology bag, you know, in ear headphones. Um, mistake having having wireless earphones. Um, one of the ladies with me, some some guy gave her these um, Apple AirPods because in in exchange for a cheapy that you can plug into your telephone because these guys have got a habit of running out um, when you need it the most, when you really, I mean, I was in the machine and thinking, oh, music's gonna help me. I put my headphones in and I play a good song from home and I'm like, yeah, it feels better than boop, headphones died. And also it's just one more thing to charge. You know, you've only got so many, well, you've got limited plugs at night. Um, so to have another thing to charge, these are Bang & Olufsen's, they're really phenomenal, but they're not Camino friendly. Um, <clears throat> one more thing to charge, batteries go dead. Cheapy that you plug into your telephone, plug into your ear, beautiful. This was my bag for my clothes. It's empty now because the clothes have been washed. All I had was two pants, the ones that you can put the, under, uh, the, the bottoms on, you can zip the bottoms on. Five underpants because uh, I think washing every single night is not possible, especially when you sleep outside under the, under the stars some nights. Um, and if your clothes is, is dirty, it's fine, but you know, just get some clean on the pants at least. And I think it was one, two, three, three or four shirts. But they're all, not, not this type, they're all very lightweighted shirts. Um, Under Armour and some two ones I bought locally. Really great. Um, then I had a yellow bag. This one was all, was all my clean clothes. And the yellow bag is the one that, whew, you still don't want to smell. This one is where all my dirty clothes went in. So I put all my dirty clothes in here, I rolled it up, and then uh, at the end, I just squeezed air out of it. And these are all my dirty clothes. So when I do washing, I literally just grab the yellow bag and I'm off to the washing machine or wherever I can. Talk about washing, see, also see to summit, uh, washing line, really cool. So you'll see this in the video, some nights we had this, so it's a washing line 
that you can just literally strap in your wherever you you can you know take it from a, from a lamp or one time from the uh, fire alarm to the television but I had a washing line so I could hook all my stuff on there um, and you don't need you don't need pecs because they've got this where is it now they've got this fancy little little system here where they've got these little rings and you can literally just clip your sock in there and tighten it with the rings like that so the washing line was a it weighs nothing but it really is a good good item to carry okay this is the black bag with all the KT tape and then this this was very good although next time I would actually carry a proper sleeping bag um, so you know the videos I watched everybody said yeah I just carry a liner because you're always gonna sleep inside yeah well that's before I met the Italians uh, and we came late quite a few times or whatever so it's just a sleeping bag liner um, but next time I will actually take a proper sleeping bag and you get them lightweight um, <clears throat> and I think it's just that's just worth it because a couple of times I slept outside or on the floor this was not great at all attached to it because you want to keep your stuff organized is something that actually was very valuable for me except when you use it on its own this is a little blow up um, little blow up pillow so, see. so you can blow this up so if you sleep just on, the, on this it's shitty honestly but where this saved my life except a few nights I only had this to sleep on is despite all the technological advancements in Spain and being a fantastically old civilization they still can't make pillows in my opinion so all the pillows were really crappy and they were flat um, and what I did is I could inflate this to whatever whatever hardness I wanted and stick it underneath the pillow and then I have a proper pillow because like I said those pillows were like your head or like this so um, this one was really so first ascent um, I don't know if you've got this brand wherever but it anyway, and you can just deflate it again and this was attached to my sleeping bag like that so I know I not I don't have to look forever in a day where is that thing but that was very valuable and I used that almost every single night uh, because very seldom was the pillows volume enough and I needed something that just to support my neck so I used that underneath the pillow just to give the pillow the the kind of you know volume I needed this was my um, <clears throat> bathroom bag what's nice about this is important is to have it um, ventilated because your stuff might be wet and you don't want this in a kind of bag like this that's not ventilated um, so in here it's just your toothbrush and every you know all your bathroom stuff everything that you will use from the bathroom uh, it would have been nice to have a hook on here because there are places we just have no way no place to sit this um, and I've seen some guys say just have a hook and I, I couldn't find a hook so it does not got a hook on it but it's ventilated so it's got holes in it one piece of advice I would do next time is I would take the same bag but bigger and ventilate as well so that I can take wet clothes and, and stuff that didn't dry properly at night and I could hang that on the outside of my bag during the day I didn't have that in here was these two towels these tiny, I think also Seat to Summit, yeah, Seat to Summit little towels that I use for drying. Yeah, they were all right, but I needed two because one took all the, you know, one was the primary one, the other one was just to the finishing off work. Um, but really, I would have taken a bigger towel than this. Um, I see some of the people, they hang, if they sleep on the bottom bunk, they hang the towel from the top bunk to cover the bottom bunk and gives them some privacy. Um, <coughs> so I think, um, I won't use these again. I'll actually use proper, not a proper, but you get a traveling towel that's bigger um, and it's not that heavy weight. So this was a bit of an overkill. And then just the basic cosmetics, blah, blah, blah. And of course, very important was your laundry wash. Use that a lot, uh, especially when we don't have a, a, a machine available and you have to wash by hand, or you've got a machine, but you don't have tablets or whatever. These laundry washes also by C2 Summit was really great but this is the bathroom bag ah, and the uh, nail clippers although everybody has got it so and nobody would, would mind giving you nail clippers but uh, a very handy bathroom bag then um, this was my bag with my um, with my wet jacket 
I actually had trousers, waterproof trousers as well. I left them early on. I left them because honestly, they're just useless and it was overkill. This is a, a, um, a, a jacket that I wore when, when it's raining um, and when I get cold. But to be honest, um, I, I, I don't know about the rain thing. I only walked in rain for two days and when I put the jacket on, I sweat inside the jacket. So I'm, I'm soaking wet inside and wet on the outside. So to me, I didn't really make a difference. So eventually I just stopped wearing the jacket because I'm wet anyway. So, so there was no difference to that. So, um, but I think it's still important. Maybe if you walk for days on end, that is important. Of course, the bag where the jacket came in. Um, then I had this, which is, um, I thought I was very clever. This is a solar charger and I could charge all sorts of USBs and stuff with this. I didn't use it that much, um, but I liked kind of having it, you know, especially when you're in the middle of nowhere. Of course, it's got these clips. I see some of them are probably stuck to the bag. So it's got its clips. And um, this I clipped uh, on the bag and then opened it up and it hang like that outside the bag and it charges whatever I've got attached to it. It does take a bit of time, charge my, my watch quite quickly. Um, again, I think most people carry power banks um, and in hindsight, I think a power bank is probably a better option. Um, but this, they're weighty and, and those power banks with the, with the solar, I don't think that solar will ever charge a power bank. But maybe invest in a lightweight but good quality power bank and that's what I'm going to do. But I might still carry this um, next time. Because it, it, it was, it, it did give me that peace of mind that listen, you know, there was one or twice where we said we're going to walk, we, we needed cell phone power. And I use that to charge. Um, I carried an extension cord, um, but didn't use it much. I carry two of these. These are also C2 Summit, I think. Now these are first ascents. These are just cords for for anything. You can just literally tie anything with them, wrap around anything, stick them in, and tie it up. Didn't use them much, but there was a couple of times where I needed them, and they were become very. They became very handy at the end of the Camino when I bought all sorts of shit and I needed to strap my bag um, to keep everything together. And then I use this all the way around because it can go nice and long, you can see that. So I put it all around the bag um, when I had my extra shoes dangling from the bag and stuff. I put it around the bag and I tightened it properly so that things were tightened. They weigh nothing, so I carried two of them and they were really, really awesome if you need it, but not, not necessary. Uh, a big thing. Okay, <clears throat> these boikies, hiking poles. Okay, I think they're absolutely, absolutely, absolutely necessary. Um, the only problem with them is, first of all, they've got these traps. You know, it's very few pilgrims knew how to use these traps for crying out loud. They're not there so that when you get shit faced, you don't lose your pulse. They are there for a reason. I see guys put their hands in like this and they've got this trap over there. Uh, that's not what they, they meant to use for. That, that's not how it works. I mean, it's, or some just let them dangle around and wonder, oh, no, what these traps are there. These traps got a purpose. And if you use them properly, they make a huge difference. So the proper way from underneath in Split your hand down and hold. Now look, I don't need to hold on to my pole. The, the pole can be, I don't need, I don't waste energy by holding on to the pole because the straps does everything for me. Look at that. And I can hang around and I can drag them behind me. And if you get jet faced, you won't lose your poles. But that's not what it's there for. It's there for doing this. So let me show you quickly again. From underneath, open your hand. Come down, hold. Now you've got a proper hold on your pole. See? Now, other things also, the length of the pole. I was surprised. <laughs> Poor idiots. I had some people, you know, you, you're not a baboon. <clears throat> so you don't need your poles all the way down there. So you walk like low. Um, you know, your poles are so short. And they're also not, you're also not worshipping the pole god, having your poles up there. 
And I've seen that as well. Uh, I'm worshiping the pole god. No, you're not. Um, your arm must be 90 degrees. So you have your arm, 90 degrees, like that. Um, and that's the length of your pole. Um, and I prefer rubber here. And I've seen the guys with the cork. Especially in the summer, your hands get sweaty and the cork becomes a disaster. It's just not nice. Um, and I've seen some, even with the rubber, I've had some tiny pole blisters or whatever you call them. They weren't really blisters, but just, you know, you can see the hand is wearing, but it was, was tired of a bit of the pole. But they work like a, so really, really cool. And then uh, the tips, please put some rubber tips on there. These ones I bought at Decathlon, but I, I never walked with these ones. I can't really tell you how much, how good they are. But I bought, I think, seven pairs during the Camino. Uh, and I keep on changing them. What I did this do is I, I filled them with a little bit of sand uh, because this sticks through the, the pole, the tip. And this, if you only walk with this, and a lot of people do that, it's really irritating. It's cluck, 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 cluck. Yeah. So I stick on rubber tips. Also, you know, it's better grip and ach, it's just much better. They do sell them on the Camino all over the place. One dollar, if you buy the one, one euro, if you buy the one euro one, last you two days if you're lucky and it's crappy from the word go. There's another one they sell for five euros. Um, if you can get them in the major towns, you will. They're quite nice. Buy a few sets. You'll see throughout the videos I change these, um, these rubber tips quite often. Um, and the sand was a nice trick to make them last a few more days. Two, because I don't see the purpose in one. Um, if you walk with them properly, they take a lot of the energy away. Um, because now, especially if you're climbing hills, you're climbing with your feet, your legs, but you're also climbing with your arms. You know, so you're spreading the load throughout your body. Um, and downhill assist, like you know, downhill assist, you put them forward. And of course, if you wear them properly like that, and this one like that, you now got all your weight there and you can put them forward and walk like that so that your, um, your, you know, that saves your knees tremendously. So I like these ones so much so that uh, the same customs official, after I've flown to Portugal and flown to Spain with them, suddenly that same customs official said they are not allowed. And um, I decided to go, and I have to go all the way back to go check them in. Um, because Madrid customs somehow has got their, I don't know. But anyway, so I checked them in because I wanted to save them um, because I emotionally attached to them but also they just flip them good. Really nice. Okay. Then, um, water. There's a lot of opinions on water. Everybody carries their water with them, you know, in bottles or oh, before water, just a proper cap. This one is shut now, needs a wash. Um, but then how I did my water, which I think worked for me, I'll tell you the negatives of it. Uh, is the bladder system. I think this is our first ascent. This is a three liter bladder, and three liters work well in, in the Meseta, where you, there's long distances where you don't have water. And of course, this pipe that goes around you and comes attached here, and you just suck on it, and you've got all your water. The positive of this is you drink far more water than somebody that's got bottles in their back. Um, bottles are also unbalanced. You've got a bottle left or a bottle right. And as soon as you unbalance your back, it, it's literally going to change the load on your on your shoulders. With this, if you carry extra three liters, it's three kilograms, and this is directly on your center of gravity. So it's directly at your back, on your backpack, on your center of gravity, and the accessibility of the water is quite easy. So you can just, and I think you drink a lot more water. So dehydration is a major risk. And by the time you realize you are dehydrated, it's almost too late, you should avoid it at all costs. So I liked it. The negative of this system, oh, another positive was, sometimes I fill it with ice, or if I had the opportunity to freeze it, I would freeze half the bag. And then the next morning I would fill the other half with water. And that was so cool, because then I had cool water all the way through the Camino, or all the way through the stage. Or I would <coughs> stop some places, and I would just chuck some ice in here. The only negative is you don't know, well, there's a couple of negatives, but the only one is, is, the two, is you don't know how much water you have. Um, that's the one. And I have twice, I ran out of water right towards the end. 
um, but that's only because I'm too lazy to fill it up. Filling it up is a bit of a schlep uh, because now it's in your backpack, your backpack is full and as soon as it's, it's, it's very difficult to fill up, you can't just go to the, you know, go to the, the fountain and fill it up. Um, so filling it up becomes a schlep and then you don't fill it up. But the solution to that is I carried a plastic bottle which I filled in the, on the fountain and then open my bag and fill this so I don't have to take this out of the bag. Next time I will carry the same bag like this but you get one that's only one liter and it folds up tight. So I'll take that and I'll fill that up at the fountain and then top up my bag so I don't have to take this out of the bag. Um, I think this is by far the best water solution. Um, I know there's some, some other people say I have two bottles here with a sipper and all of that. <clears throat> you can see how much water you've got but you fill this up, three liters, that's obviously three kilograms, right on your center of gravity, right on your back, cool water against your back and easy accessibility. Um, this was a really, really good, good thing. Then headlight. I never bought one. I never took one because I figured I won't walk at night. And if I do walk at night, uh, it'll be light enough and everything. Um, oh shit, it's still on. Still works. So, um, I bought this one somewhere. It's a cheap Chinese model. It, it's crappy, um, but it, it saved my, my backside because we did walk at night. And the problem is that I never thought of is I'm not wearing boots. So my shoes are, are trail runners. And if you walk at night and you step on a stone or you step in a hole, you literally can lose, um, you know, you can, you can, your Camino can end there because you can have an ankle injury. Uh, next time I'll take a proper headlight. Um, and something I thought about long and hard, and I thought, no, I won't need it. But then it turns out that I need one. This one is guaranteed for two hours, so it lasts about 30 minutes. Chinese guarantee. Okay. Then let's see the bag. Okay, now obviously I can't lift this entire bag. But this is the bag that I used. It's a uh, Deuter. So I had a look at a lot of people's bags. Um, Osprey and Deuter seems to be the, the bags the, the bags that most people use, and there are a few brands that I don't know. Um, I think anything from a 30 to 40 liter. This is a 32, and what was nice about it is you can open it at the bottom, and I can, there's another, another compartment here, which I had some stuff in, and of course it's got the built-in, but I think most of them's got that now, the built-in uh, raincoat here. There's a built-in raincoat, which I think is important, because you're gonna get wet, but you don't wanna get your clothes and your, goodies in your bag wet and they can open from both sides and of course inside it's designed for the bladder so they're all designed for the bladder so it's got the bladder system in there um, on top it's got this pocket here and this pocket I used for my sensitive document stuff I don't want to lose so I put my passport and things like that in here and then right on top for easy access I put um, you know my credentials because I want to take it out to stamp and I put all my lunch and my food and everything in here. Um, that's just my reading glasses, which I never used. Um, but it would have been cool if, if this was, was like insulated because I carried chorizos and cheese here for a few days in the sun. Of course, it was still fine because I'm still alive. But if this were insulated, that would be really, really nice. And you can stick a, your, your food in here, but that was my quick access bag. Um, the rest of the bag, I think important, you see like all, 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 this, all the, along this side of the bag, I've got these clips. Um, because you clip on stuff to your bag, you can put your poles in there if you don't use them. I took a lock, a combination lock. Um, actually, I took a whole couple of them. One I gave away. Um, I never used this lock. I, I never, I, will, I was nowhere where I felt my, somebody will steal my things or whatever. So I never used this bag, this lock at all. Um, it was just hanging, hanging here. And it's got two side pockets. Uh, and what I put in there was an extra cell phone and uh, my little South African flags, which I cut every now and then, and donate them and stick them on places, just to show that, you know, we do travel. And that's my, my bag. And I think very important, that's something that it, I don't know if she's a nun or what she, was, she gave me, so I'll hang it there. And then, of course, this is just to insulate, you know, to lift it off your back so it doesn't hang, it's not, not directly on your back. Um, and I tell you, 
I think this this bag was phenomenal. It honestly did the trick, and uh, I liked it very much. Um, the shoulder strap here is very important, um, and that caused my trapped issues. So when I re learned to, to tighten my shoulder strap, that worked very nicely. Um, I carried my wallet. Oh, my pants had uh, zips, zip locks. Again, so you can shit face it and lose your wallet. I carried my passport in a separate bag and then I carried in this my sensitive bag which was in the inside locked in there. I also carried a, a, a separate wallet which is a couple of bank cards in there so that if I do lose my primary wallet I have this and here's my vaccinations and stuff like that and of course this one was carried in a plastic bag but on the top and you all know what this is. This is of course your your credentials all your stamps and everything and this is a beautiful document because it's entirely and completely unique you won't get anybody whose one will match yours <clears throat> because you can have your stamps everywhere and it was quite fun when you meet somebody and you sit down and you actually take out your credentials and you say oh I was there oh I was here oh I've got the same stamp here and you like match your stamps and try to remember where you got all your stamps from and all those places this is really a super cool document. I don't know what to do with it yet. I'm going to frame it or what. But it's your credentials. I got mine at St. John Pyder Port. Um, I think you can get them in the major places where you start. I know in Ron Savage it's a bit of an issue to get it there. Um, but that's your... And, and this one I put on top, like I said, so that's for easy access. Then, hold on one second. Ta-da! Now this I did not have on the Camino. But I wish I had. It's a little proper, proper little portable speaker. It's not heavy, but I honestly think this is so cool because we were, we were really, you know, some nights you just want to chill, you just want to relax, you want to have some music. And if you've seen on the videos, we had danced and we had some fun, but, but we were dancing on cell phone speakers like it was a disco. But I, I will carry a nice little speaker next time. I know it sounds silly. Some people will say, oh, but this is a spiritual pilgrimage, blah, blah, blah. I know, what, whatever works for you. But I, I bought this on my way home and I'm so chuffed with it because it's really cool. Um, and it can go onto my, can hook onto here or onto my side. It's not a disco, the Camino. It's not, you know, you can have, you can have your days. I mean, if you, if you want to celebrate, you know, the second anniversary of your fourth divorce, you go on your own, you know, nobody bothers you. But you will have times where depending on your crowd and if you're younger, you know, you guys want to make a bit of a music and you just want to celebrate a hard day's walking and uh, a good speaker I think is awesome. So I'm chuffed with this one. I bought this one and I'll use it next year. Um, any gear shortfalls? Not that I can think of. Um, except the rain gear. I, I didn't need waterproof trousers. Oh, and by the way, my shoes are not Gore-Tec. Um, if you walk in the summer, you don't want waterproof shoes. You want shoes that breathe. Um, Gore-Tec is going to be a problem for you <clears throat> and it'll cause a lot of heat in your feet, a lot of moisture and of course you've got heat, moisture and you add friction to it, you'll have blisters. So um, I don't take Gore-Tec shoes and I don't need boots because um, if you look at the surface we walk on, a uh, boot is an overkill. Um, there's, there's maybe 5% of the Camino where you wish you had a boot and you just have to be careful when you're walking there. But generally the surfaces are such nature that you don't need a boot. You just carry this, I mean, you walk with normal shoes, they're nice and light. Um, beware of those gel inners, they sell them all over on the Camino. If you take those gel inners and you weigh the thing, it's heavier than the shoe. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Um, but yeah, if you desperately need them, I suppose it can save your backside. But as I said, mine work beautifully. And that is a quick review of my Camino gear. Uh, what else? Uh, nothing else. So next time I think this is pretty much what I'll do, bar a couple of small changes, wash the bag of course, and then I'll be ready for the next one. Uh, I'll let you know who knows where and what, but uh, what an incredible journey and if you'd want to do the Camino, I honestly say it is fantastic. I'm still having a hard time dealing with everything that happened. I'm just processing it and processing all the good that I got from it. So yeah, this is really cool and awesome. 
hope it helped and it's been a privilege sharing my journey with you and thank you for those who've commented on it like i said a few times i only made the video so that i can watch it myself and for my friends that walk with me and my family but i made it public so anybody can watch it it's probably not for children <laughs> you'd ask you when you upload is this for children Fuck no. <laughs> anyway but well, it's been a pleasure um and uh, hopefully I'll figure out how to group all of my videos into a playlist and um, maybe next year I have a new story to tell. Thank you for, for joining me on this journey. I hope you enjoyed it. Buen Camino.